love the way you talk about your mom. Were you always able to understand who she was? She was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenic. For me, it was normal and it was slightly chaotic. What got you going on that journey from Sanders to Trump? I don't like politics. I'll be honest with you, Carlos. I hate politics. I am surprised to hear that. Tell me a little bit about the film. How did you decide to do it? In the acting world, they were not ready for all of this. <laughs> Hey family, it's Carlos Watson. Happy New Year. We've got a beautiful episode for you today. Joy Villa, you know her as the actress, the musician, the artist, also the conservative political commentator. You're going to see her like you've never seen her before. It's a whole new conversation. I hope you enjoy. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, Carlos. good. Oh, look at that set. Oh, that is glam right there. <laughs> you know what? They did a good job. They did a good job. Did I hear you're in London? Is that right? Yeah, I'm a little bit uh, like 45 minutes north of London in Sussex. So before London and Sussex actually properly said, where did you get your creative juices? Where did you go when you needed to get your music, your other your other creative endeavors? Where would you go? I used to crave big cities because big city life was what invigorated me. You know, I was raised in New York City and I lived in the Bronx. I lived in Los Angeles for a long time. And I just wanted that big city life. I was like really hungry for the action. I actually like alone time. I'm somebody who can enjoy being alone. As much as I love being around people, it can be work for me. So I, when I'm alone, I like to just do my own thing, but I like to be around people. And now I, I want the countryside. It's just a different energy. It's, it's I want nature. I want to commune with the animals and be like a little Disney princess. Oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take walks and there's, you know, I'm jogging at night and it's still and I just see the stars. And I've never been like this before. So it's, it's a different, it's a different energy. I love that. Now, you made me smile when you said that you grew up in the Bronx in part because that means you and your girl AOC have a little bit in common. <laughs> That's right. That's right. AOC, I mean, we're around the same age. We wear the same color of lipstick. We could have hung out in the Bronx. I could have gone to a bar. She was serving alcohol. I don't know. You know, she she wore the dress at the Met Gala that was sort of a, a kind of mocking, but also doing her version of my dress that I wore to the Grammys. So I feel like some universe somewhere, we're probably gonna get to know each other. And even though we're on different political spectrum sides, I feel like we could we could actually hang out and have a conversation. Yeah, I like that. I like bringing together the best of the Bronx. That's kind of fun. So your mom and dad, what did they do? Or what did they do? Yeah, so my parents passed away. Unfortunately, they were oh, so close to me. My mom passed away almost 13 years ago now, and my dad was about 10 years ago. And they passed away from strokes. Unfortunately, they both died in the same way. I feel like they were so connected to each other and so in love that um, they, they died the same way in a few years apart. Now my mom, she suffered from mental illness. She was an incredibly sensitive woman, an artist, oh, uh, very broken at times, but brilliant. So she did anything with fiber arts, you know, crocheting, knitting. And then my dad was an actor when he was younger and a salesman. He owned his own company, his own business. And my grandparents owned a chain of liquor stores, actually Playboy Liquor in Hollywood, California. It's no longer in my family, but that's where my parents met in 1977. Playboy Liquor. And how many kids? How many kids? So I have a younger sister and I have an older brother, and my brother is adopted, and he was adopted later in life, and we're very close. I love the way you talk about your family, and I especially love the way you talk about your mom, because mm. I, I feel like for so many of us, when a parent struggles, you know, when you're a kid, it's uh, it's hard to process that. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to realize your, your parents are just human, and it's hard to give them grace and to give them space and to really see it with a little bit of, of separation and your ability to appreciate your mom for who she was and to give her her space and her grace, I think is uh, it, it's special. And uh, and it says something good about who she was um, that, that you got to that place. Were you always able to understand who she was and, and give her her space and grace given that she was was no, challenged. that's, okay. you know, that I had to learn that growing up. 
you know? She was diagnosed actually as paranoid schizophrenic. And, you know, for people who know about that, it's extreme. It's the extreme ups and downs. I mean, it's an extreme version of bipolar. She was a hell of a good mom. Considering what she was given, the circumstances, she raised us with love. And my dad was a hell of a dad. He always put food on the table. For me, it was just, it was normal and it was slightly chaotic. I mean, it was very chaotic, but it was also centered on love and art and a belief that, you know, there's something greater out there. And they never made me feel like I couldn't be an artist. That was the most important thing. They let me, they let me be an artist. I'm the son of a political junkie. My dad just loved politics growing up. And to his credit, he made it interesting. He made it interesting, he made it relevant, and he we grew up in Miami, so he was very open to a wide range of conversations. And I heard that you went from a Sanders supporter to a Trump supporter. Yeah. How did you make that journey? What, what got you going on that journey from Sanders to Trump? Woo, it, it seems like forever ago now, doesn't it? Remember 2016? <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of uh, political kerfuffle, right? There was just a lot going on. And I just did the Grammys in 2015, my first ever Grammys. And I just kind of started coming out uh, as an artist and being you know, out there. And I was touring, I did my first world tour, still independent. And politics had, was coming into the scene and I, I, I was supporting Bernie Sanders because I really liked what he was saying about trade agreements. The Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement is a continuation of other disastrous trade agreements like NAFTA, CAFTA, and permanent normal trade relations with China. He seemed to be for the people. When I looked at it, I, I wasn't very strong politically, but I said, okay, well, I don't agree with a lot of what he's saying, but most of the music industry is supporting him and it seems to be a good thing. And then I started looking at Trump and I said, wait, what he is saying is, you know, despite the rhetoric, because at first I was like, no, this guy is obnoxious. You know, I can't with this guy. And then I said, well, what is he really saying? He's saying more of the family values, more of the, you know, bring it back to old school American style. And I thought there's a little bit from Sanders that I like, but what Trump is saying is, is kind of bringing it back to the classic American style. We will make America great again. You know, he may be loud and, and say not the right thing at the right time, but I'm gonna vote for this guy. And I'm just gonna hope and pray that what he says is, is true. And he is gonna distance us from China and let's lower taxes and sort of bring it back to the 1980s, what we had in America, where our economy was really good. And that's, that's why I made the change. Yeah, in simple terms. And then, and then talk to me on race, because there are people who would go with you on that early part, but then would say that where they would hesitate and where they couldn't embrace Trump would mm. be around questions of race, questions of, of equality, of equity, of, of gender. How did you feel on those topics? Were you, were you good with where he is and was on that? Yeah, I mean, when you think about equity or equality, right, these are two totally different terms that often get conflated. I was raised that the harder you work, the more you get, rather than, oh, let me be a victim and cry victimhood for this for whatever reason. And so then government, can you take care of me? And with the race thing, I mean, I've never heard Trump say anything overtly racist, and I've met the man. I've seen the media make a big deal out of what he said. I've seen the news say a lot of things and conflate it. I've heard him say things that are stupid. I've heard him say things that are, and I know a lot of my supporters are gonna say, how can you say that, Joy? But I, I call it like it is. And now society moves so much towards this, like, well, if you don't get something, it's because of your color. Or if you don't get something, it's because of your race. And I don't believe that. You know, I'm a woman of color. And yes, I've faced prejudice before, but I've never said that is why I'm not to where I'm at, you know? And I don't like that argument being used because a lot of the younger generation will pick that up and say, oh, it's be because I'm not successful, it's because I'm a woman. I, I don't like politics. I'll be honest with you, Carlos. I hate politics. It would probably be surprising for you to, to hear that. I am surprised to hear that. Yeah, I actually hate it, but what I like is freedom. I like that there's a path to be outspoken. I like that now, that young people are more aware of politics. 
I like that we had a non-politician be elected as president. Would you run for office one day? People ask me that all the time. Uh, I attempted to run. I looked at running for office end of 2017 to 2018. I don't think so. I'm, I'm an artist, you know, and as much as I like that it's a, a, a place now for rebels and I, I'm a freedom fighter and somebody's always spoken for the little guy to be outspoken. Even if you don't agree with me, I'm going to fight for your right not to agree with me. You know, I'll fight for your freedoms no matter what. And I think that because I'm, I'm well-spoken and attractive and I've been out there. What we need to do instead of tearing down America, we need to build America up. The people see that naturally as, oh, you should run for office. And I kind of look at it and I go, yeah, but then I'll get elected. And I don't know if I want to be elected. <laughs> I don't know if I want that life because <laughs> now I'm trapped there. You know? You know what? Something tells me that you will do it at some point. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if it's in a different phase of life. Mm -hmm. Because I do think that you would be choosing not just to run, but to serve. Right now, it's a little bit, it, it borders on a little bit of too much pop culture. You know? I mean, if I'm going to be in pop culture, I'd rather be more free and do what I'm doing now. Be able to do movies, be able to do music, be able to dress the way I want and do red carpets and, you know, look very glamorous. I mean, once you set foot on the spotlight to be a politician, you know, you get attacked. I mean, look at Kamala Harris. You know, I may not agree with the neighbor politics, but she can't wear a different shade of lipstick without getting criticized for that. You know, you wear your hair a certain way because no longer are you yourself. You are representing the people and you have to look and act and, and, and be somewhat in a certain way. This is a beautiful place for our wedding. You know, my dad's going to be more excited to see you than I think he is to see me. Yeah, well, he knows you're going to get looked after. Hey, congrats on the film. How, tell me a little bit about the film. How did you decide to do it? Yeah, thank you. So I've done films before. People don't know that. But I decided to focus on music. I decided to fully focus on music because in the acting world, people weren't ready for Joy Villa, Carlos. They were not ready for all of this. And it's funny because I got offered this role, you know, online. And I thought it might have been a joke. And the producer, Chris Johnson, he, he's like, hey, I'd like to offer you the role of starring in this film called The Contrast, The Role of Maria. It's a romantic comedy. And I'm like, there's no way. I get offers all the time, you know. And so I said, okay, sure, I'm interested. Send me the script. And that process started in 2018, believe it or not. And we shot the film in 2019, summer of 2019, 2019, before COVID. It's entering the film to come out now. I assume, I don't want to project on you, but I assume that, that the last two years probably has changed you in some interesting ways. I mean, do you look at the woman who starred in that? And, you know, are you still the same woman who we're going to get to watch? Well, I mean, yes and no, without sharing too much of my private life. It's a romantic comedy, and there was a lot of things going on. The things that you see in the film, she has to choose between the traditional love that her family approves of or this new love that excites her. So I had to make a lot of personal choices during this film that came on me, and I thought, is this life imitating art or what? And it was, it was such a crazy um, emotion. I was going through a lot of different emotions shooting this, but it was also the easiest thing I've ever done. The, the timing was so perfect. I mean, you really have allowed yourself to be who you are, which is a multifaceted person. Do you look ahead and say, here's where I'll be in 10, 20 years? Does it just unfold as it's unfolding? Where, where's your heart, where's your head in terms of thinking about the future? This is why, you know, you're a great interviewer because you're really speaking to a person. You know, you're not just doing a media interview. You're speaking to me as a human. I appreciate that. There's a plan, absolutely. And there's goals and there's dreams that I've already accomplished, but it's always been my goal and purpose has been to help others. So if that takes me into more politics sometime, fine. If it takes me into more ministry related stuff, great. If it takes me into more heavy movies for the next few years, awesome. Music, great. Wherever that is, as long as my purpose is there, then I know it's the right thing. Do you mind if I do something that I call uh, rapid fire? Let's do it, Carlos. Favorite book? Oh, um, 
Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald would be my favorite one. Great title. Okay. Um, uh, favorite actor? Oh, Robert Redford. Classic. Most interesting thing you've ever learned about love? Is that it's, uh, there's no shortage of it. There's no shortage of love. Most outrageous person you've ever met? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I met a lot of outrageous people. Steven Tyler. If you had one do-over uh, in this life, what would you what would you want to do over? How would you use your do-over? There's I don't want to do over anything. I think I, I I've lived such a colorful, crazy, fun existence. You know, I think it's all good. If you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would you love to have dinner with? Oh my gosh, what a question! Mm. I'd say Leonardo da Vinci. Joy, my last question. Um, what's one of the songs that plays in your head and plays in your heart? What do you hear when you hear songs? What song or what's one of the songs that plays in your head, plays in your heart? I'll tell you one song is by an artist called LP. And the song is called Lost on You. When you get older, plain or sane, will you remember all the danger we came from? And I'm so in love with this song right now. I get obsessed with songs. I will run and work out to it and listen to it for days on an end. You know, tell me, was everything lost on you? Was that lost on you? And the way her voice breaks, it's just, I want to cover it. Joy, this was, uh, this was too much fun. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Carlos. You're amazing. It's been a pleasure. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed Joy Vela. What a beautiful and brilliant and interesting person. What a rich mix. I love how much she used the word rebellious. You can tell that she's comfortable in her skin, comfortable being herself. Really look forward to meeting her in person. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show. Be safe. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs>